Call me mad, but I just invested 700,000 into this weird looking bunch of things because one day I believe none of us are going to be paying energy bills. And I know that sounds mad because energy bills are going through the roof right now because of excessive cups of tea and lots of other things. But because of the increasing number of energy efficient homes and cutting edge technology that we're gonna share with you in this video, all of us in the next decade are going to be able to earn the Benjamins whilst we sleep. Don't believe me? Here's what Greg Jackson, the CEO of the largest energy company in the UK had to say. Believe him. <clears throat> in just six years, 100,000 homeowners, families and couples could be living without ever having to think about an energy bill. I think Greg Jackson must be very posh, but I'm not sure. As an investor who's put in a lot of money into this technology, along with our man Greg, who has literally put in billions, I'm gonna to explain to you why we are doing that. Woo! Well, we are here in a compound of surrounding houses. These are literally some of the most beautiful and cutting edge technology houses in the entire country. Before I dive into how bills will go to zero and I show you some of the insane energy efficient homes we visited to make this video, let's take a short tour of the UK energy scene as it stands right now so that you're up to speed. Experts split the energy scene into a supply side and a demand side. Let's start with the supply side because I feel like it. Most folks have focused on improving the supply side via trying to build more nuclear power stations, wind farms, etc, etc. But this demand side with energy efficient homes is actually more important for the zero energy bill future than any of that stuff. And later in this video, I'm gonna take you inside a futuristic home where nearly every piece of this technology is already working, singing together but first, let's understand why the supply side solutions alone are not gonna get us there. Two pipes feed our lives, an electricity cable and a gas pipe. Four out of five homes in Britain still burn natural gas for heating and for hot water. But why does that matter? Because every time gas prices go haywire, both pipes get more expensive. And that's the heart of our problem. You see, even though only 40% of our energy supply in this country comes from gas, gas sets the prices. Even with wind farms spinning like crazy, the UK's wholesale power price is set by a rule. This villain has a name and it's called marginal pricing. Jake, are you familiar with what marginal pricing is? Yeah, so the whole bidding process, right? And how it's bought. Marginal pricing is the fact that the energy price in the UK is set by whatever the highest energy generation cost is at the time. 98% of the time, that's gas. The way that our energy is bought and sold is you've got this wholesale market. It's like the eBay of energy, where you've got Octopus Energy and these other energy providers on one side, and then you've got these energy producers on the other side, all of these different power stations and wind farms. And they will start these auctions off, and every 30 minutes, energy is matched up with the demand that there is out there. But the thing is that last bit of energy that is sold, which is typically pulled from a gas power station, is the price that is set for that entire 30 minute segment. And so that means that it doesn't matter if you're able to produce really cheap wind energy. It doesn't matter if you're able to produce really cheap nuclear energy. That expensive gas power station is going to dictate the pricing for the entire thing. So that means that when Russia invades Ukraine and gas prices go through the roof, even though we might be producing really cheap wind energy, we as a consumer are going to have to pay gas prices. And that's why our energy bills treble. Governments can reform that rule with things like zonal pricing, but politics and decades old infrastructure moves Glacially. I think just generally because of the way politics works globally now, people are thinking about the next election term and only thinking sort of two to five years ahead at a time. And they're not thinking 30 to 60 years ahead. You might be thinking, okay, well, why don't we build more nuclear power stations? It's a great idea. Nuclear power stations produce cheap energy. But the problem that we have is that Sizewell C, which was a nuclear power station that got commissioned back in 2012, is going to probably come online for the first time and start issuing energy in 2034. 
Then you might be thinking, okay, well, what about wind energy, Ibrahim? We've got loads of wind farms these days. That's another brilliant idea. But the challenge that you have, as any politician knows, is that a really effective wind farm in the North Sea that is producing a ton of energy is only as good as the national grid, the system that it's putting the energy into. And the shocking reality is that our wind farms are probably operating at 30 to 50% capacity. And sometimes they are paid by our national grid basically to switch off for a period of time. So folks, the supply side is basically either too slow or too expensive or a bit of both. So the real solution has to come from, in my view, the demand side. Tech breakthroughs change the game completely and it will allow three things to happen to bring our bills to zero. Firstly, effortless. Let tech handle the decisions. Just like my cover drives back in the day when I was in the under 17s. Economize, use power when it's dirt cheap. And finally, earn, get paid for playing smart with your energy. When you put these three things together, your house becomes what I call an intelligent energy hub. Basically, a mini power station. All right, let's head outside. Harris, where's the marmalade? Be energy efficient. Most of us, our understanding of electricity is basically these big pylons like the one that's behind me. But the reality is that energy is priced at different times across the day. When it's peak time, electricity is really expensive. And when it's off peak, electricity can become super cheap. In fact, during winter last year, electricity became so cheap and Octopus wanted people to be using electricity so much during the middle of the night that at 2 a.m. they would pay you eight P per kilowatt hour to use electricity at that particular time. And then at peak time, the very next day, that same electricity would be sold to you at 45p per kilowatt hour. That's how crazy the price differences are. So step one is simply shifting heavy hitters, the washing machine, the EV charger, the dishwasher, into those bargain hours when electricity is much quieter. So a really cool example is by a startup called Adia Thermal. They basically allow you to retrofit heat pumps into our old school home heating systems. And the other cool thing they do is they've got their technology and their software that allows you to make your boiler boil between the hours of 4 and 6 a.m. in the morning where it's a lot cheaper. So what they do is their technology will switch on the heating so that the hot water tank heats up between the hours of 4 and 6 a.m. in the morning. So then when the peak time hits, you are letting that energy just coast through the house without having to spend any money. And that single timing shift from when your energy is consumed literally attacks the single biggest cost that we have for our electricity, heating. So are technologies like heat pumps the answer to efficiency? So um, heat pumps are the future. The only challenge is that, if, that a heat pump can be anywhere between 200 and 600 percent efficient um, and electricity is four times the price of gas. So you need it to be running. You need your heat pump to be running 400 percent efficient or you'll be paying more than you used to. This is where I want to introduce you to Piers, who's the other co-founder of Tuke. He's also the builder of a castle and he has an estate that is putting energy efficiency, solar panels, heat pumps, even wind turbines at the heart of their development. And he is now going to explain to us all about heat pumps. You want to start a heat pump? That, that's their heat pump, yeah. Mm. So that runs the air conditioning and the heating all in one system. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's how you apply it. Right. I mean, ultimately the efficiency is there. The, the challenge we have is we put all our tariffs on our electric rather mm. than our gas. So gas is artificially low. As a, as a product to buy. Oh, I see. But electric's okay. artificially high. So yeah. when we invest in wind turbines, we invest in anything, we always put that tariff, that cost of making those investments onto our electric bill. Yeah. Again, it's one of these technologies that will continually get better and better. Yeah, yeah. So Ibrahim, efficiency sounds great, except no one wants a 3 a.m. alarm saying, go start the tumble dryer. This is where a very interesting company called Tuke comes in. They purport that they will become the operating system for energy in our homes. You see, all of these big energy consumption devices like dishwashers, washing machines, smart fridges, heat pumps, solar panels, all of that, in order to orchestrate and harness it, you need it to be talking to each other 
on one single operating layer. And that's where Tuke comes in. Tuke is looking at all of this data input and it's tracking what the live prices are at any one time from the grid. And based on that information, it will automatically switch on and switch off your devices. Rowan, one of the co-founders, describes it as plaid, but for electricity. And in case you don't know what plaid is, it's like a universal plug for money apps. It lets any finance app talk safely to any bank account without the app having to actually build a custom connector for each bank. Tuke is going to do that entire technology, but for energy. It lets any smart appliance talk to any energy tariff or supplier so that your device can automatically use the cheapest and greenest electricity without you even having to think about it. Imagine it as a digital cable that fits any home device to the energy deal that is best for it. Okay, so we've talked to you about economizing and the effortlessness of this technology when used properly, but here's how you actually can earn from it using the kind of incredible technology that Piers is showing us. So these are actual tiles. These are tiles? Tiles, so they're not- And they're solar. And they're solar, so they're solar tiles. So it's actually the roof structure. So, so the roof is not, there isn't a roof and then solar tiles or, or solar on top. The actual roof is the solar tile. And then this is our wind turbine. Oh, lovely. So uh, first one in the country. Oh, wow. So it's made in Italy. Um, I researched it about six years ago and um, it's called the Hercules. The Hercules? Uh, but it's a five kilowatt um, wind turbine. But for me, it's a piece of art. It's beautiful, yeah. As well as, so it's off at the moment. Yeah. Um, but the blades are um, sort of carbon wrapped in um, sort of like a, a wood veneer. Nice. Uh, 10 meters high. And essentially that will produce about five kilowatts of power. But the beauty is it's working when you're sleeping. And here's how this third leg becomes possible. Being able to store cheap power. That's the heart of it. So now, Cabsy, we're going into, which I personally think is the most exciting bit, which is the uh, electrics, the solar panels, the technology. And I'm not talking about this tractor. <laughs> well, how much storage have you got, battery storage in total? For 240 this kilowatts. Oh, wow. So it's like, it's a lot. If you and think like the average home would use about 30 or 40 a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've got, we got a lot. So the battery, the battery is a thing that actually is key for mass adoption. I think so, and I think, I would say it's more important than solar is. The cheap tariffs are available already. It's much easier to install a battery than it is to do solar. Uh, and the other thing is the technology is coming along. So whatever you invest and buy this year, yeah. will be better next year and better next year and better next year. But what's great about these is they're, they're quiet. Nice they're, and clean. Nice and clean. Nice. And, then, and then you've got a great app so you can then log in yeah. and see what's happening. Spruce is another interesting startup that is making it far easier for homeowners and installers to buy the solar panels and the batteries that they need to be able to do an installation job. And it does it really quickly. And the beauty of this setup, where you've now got solar panels and a battery, is that solar panels will fill that battery up at midday when the sun is out. And then at the off-peak grid times, if there's any more capacity in this battery, it will fill it up even more. And then when it's expensive, at 6 p.m. for example, the battery starts discharging into the house if it's needed, or if there's more spare capacity, then it will actually sell it back to the grid at 40p per kilowatt hour. You can also earn flexibility bonuses. For example, Octopus pays one pound per kilowatt hour if your home can dial down demand during a tight hour. And with Tuke's data feeds and its ability to control the various different smart machines, they know exactly which homes can actually help in doing this, and they can pay them that as well. Luke, one of the founders, told me that in their pilot homes, the combination of off-peak charging and room-by-room -room control already brings annual bills close to break even, with the potential to tip it into credit once battery storage is added on top of that. That is the holy grail combination, folks. Your energy usage is going to drop, the energy that you do buy is going to be bargain priced, and sometimes you're gonna be running things so efficiently that you're gonna be able to sell that extra capacity back to the grid and make some money as well. Add all of those things together and your annual bill should be somewhere between zero and maybe even negative. This is the start of a really exciting period in this energy industry. Adia, Thermal, Tube, Spruce, 
they're just three early pieces of a very complicated jigsaw. Different brands are going to be out there tackling batteries, EV chargers, home storage, but the pillars are going to stay the same towards taking your bills down to zero. As professional investors in the venture industry, that's how we are thinking about it at Curate, where we're thinking of this energy industry as these three pillars. And we are very interested in backing startups, tackling each of these pillars. Half of Britain's 28 million homes becoming intelligent hubs would shave six gigawatt of energy required at peak times. That's the equivalent of two nuclear reactors. And in fact, these energy efficient homes will have an additional two gigawatts of battery power on top, stored away and ready to flow back into the grid at tea time. And that's just because of intelligent energy usage. If you've enjoyed this video, you've benefited from it, please do share it and please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us. And if you're an experienced investor and you want to have a chat with me about how we think about investing, then drop me a line. You can fill out a form that's in the description below. Please also let us know what you think about this video in the comments below. I read every single comment. Until next time, ciao.